Welcome and divine greetings to everyone all over the world, wherever you are joining us from. May the good Lord bless you. We welcome you. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Be greeted in Jesus' name. We want to thank God for his goodness and mercy, for his hand that is upon our lives. God has been keeping us safe. God has been fighting battles for us. I just want to talk to somebody and tell you that you are not alone. It doesn't matter what comes against you, but you, I, I want you to know this. You are not alone. The Lord is with you. Paul says, at my appearing, no one stood with me. But he says, the Lord, the Lord strengthened me. He stood with me. God is always with you. Never, never feel alone. Never feel that you are by yourself because the Lord is with you. Welcome to our Sunday service again to, today. We are dealing on prayer. Prayer is a practical subject. We have to learn to pray. We have got to learn to pray. We have got to, to, to learn, teach yourself to pray. Remember what uh, one of the disciples of Jesus, he went to Jesus and said, Master, teach us how to pray. Let me talk to you. It is so important. You cannot make it on this planet Earth without mastering the power or the secret behind a praying person. I want to say to you, teach yourself to become a praying person. Praying is not a gift. Praying is, is commitment. Commit yourself to pray. Commit yourself to talk to your Father in heaven. Commit yourself to have a relationship with your Father in heaven through prayer. I want to tell you, if your prayer relationship, if your, your, your relationship with God is okay, it solves a lot of things on the planet Earth. And I just want to say to you today, as we are coming uh, uh, unto this service, I just want you to be ready for prayer. Begin to pray once more for a minute. Can we take time and just pray? Because this is a season of prayer. I just want you to pray right where you are. Raise your voice and just begin to pray. Father, we thank thank you. We thank you this morning for your goodness and mercy. We thank you this morning that you are with us. We thank you that you are here. We thank you that you are in this service. We thank you, Lord, oh God, that you are changing our situations. You are turning things, Lord, oh God, right side up. We thank you this day in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the angels that are surrounding us. Thank you for the divine, for the beasts of heaven that are with us this morning. We just want to bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, O oh God, that you have made us to be partakers of your divine nature. We thank you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, that, Lord, O oh God, no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. The enemy can come in like a flood, but the Spirit of God will raise a standard against him. Father, we are praying this very day in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, we saturate the atmosphere with that spiritual transactions in the name of Jesus Christ. We saturate our atmosphere, we saturate our houses, we saturate our cars with the presence of God. Oh my God, we pray the portals of heaven are opened over this place today in the name of Jesus. Wherever we enter, I hear the word of the Lord say to somebody, I will go before you and I'll make the crooked way straight. Allah Mahansi, I pray this very day that God has already gone ahead of you. God is already ahead in this week. God is already working on your behalf. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Put your hands together for Jesus and say yes, yes, yes. Today, shortly, I want to introduce the prayer of petition or the prayer of requests where you make requests unto God, where you pray seeking for the intervention of the heavens. 
I want you this very day to understand. I will try not to be fast so that I can actually give you relevant foundation that you can actually use. As long as you are on the planet Earth, as long as you are in this troubled world, now and again you will need the intervention or divine intervention in your situation. And divine intervention does not just come automatically. You must understand that there is a principle of petitioning the heavens. There is a principle of requesting from your father. I want to clear this off. A lot of people, they listen to wrong teachings. There are teachings that are being thrown everywhere these days that make you feel ashamed to ask. You feel ashamed to request. You feel ashamed to pray and call on God to help or for assistance. I want to tell you that the highest level of pride is when you cannot humble yourself and ask for divine help from God. A lot of people who cannot pray, they are proud people. Pride is the one that causes you to think that you are so high that you cannot request. But I want you to understand that you are a child of God. Just like any other child in the house, they have a right to request from their parents. I have children at home. They can call. They can do what they... When they lack anything, when they lack anything, they request. Because I'm the father, I must supply. And Paul writes it nicely. He says, my father, my God, shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. When you are in need, when you are in lack, let me tell you, don't look around for people. You have a right. There is a button that is called petition prayer. When you press the button of petition, the heavens are willing to help you. The Bible says, cursed is a man who puts his trust in man. I want you to know that the heavens are ready. The heavens are willing to listen to you. You know, with people, people usually they get tired of your request. They get tired of what you tell them. But heaven, God will never get tired to hear your prayer. I said it last time, you have never prayed enough. You cannot over pray, my God. You cannot, you know, over request. No. The heavens have an open check which you can complete what you want. Heaven is ready to supply. It is only your unbelief that causes you to doubt that God can do it for you. But I have, I'm here today to encourage you that God is willing to do it for you in the name of Jesus Christ. If you hear me, you say yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. You must understand something about prayer. A lot of people, they don't pray because they don't understand this principle. I want you to understand this principle today according to Psalm 115, verse 16. The heavens, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth has He given to the children of men. The original blueprint of God. God is in charge of the heavens. And God gave Adam or humanity to be in charge of the earth. This was before the fall. And now God cannot change that. It is not possible. It is not possible for God to interfere in the affairs of men without being invited. Spiritually, for you to be able to be in charge in the affairs of the earth, you must have a body. Without a body, you cannot be in charge on earth. Therefore, the weapon of prayer 
or the transport of prayer. It is a way of us on earth inviting those in heaven or the divine to come and intervene in our situation that we cannot solve according to the standard and the equation of the earth. Therefore, when we don't pray, God does not intervene. When you don't pray, God cannot work on your behalf because legally, He is not allowed to intervene in your affairs without your authorization. There is a secret about prayer. Prayer is amazing. When you are praying, you are allowing or you are authorizing God. You are giving God the password to operate in your situation or on earth. Therefore, a lot of people don't understand that the heaven, the heaven of the heavens belongs to God. And the earth belongs to men. I have heard people who come and say to me, if God is there, why is it that there is so much chaos on earth? Why is it that there are so many problems on earth? I'm here to talk to you. God is not the one who is in charge on earth. I am a hardship. Okay, I know people say God is in control. That's, that's a statement that is not complete according to the statutes and the principles of how God operates. God is in control in the heavens. That's why you go to heaven today, there is serious order, there is serious organization, there is serious unity, there is serious oneness when you go to heaven because God is in control. But on earth, God has given it to the sons of men. When you see the chaos on earth, when you see the disasters on earth, don't blame it on God. It is the sons and the daughters of men that have messed the earth up. So when we are in the mess that we are in, we need prayer so that we can invite the divine to come down and begin to put things in order. Unless the divine are invited, they don't come. Unless God is invited, he doesn't come because spirits are not allowed to rule on the planet earth. They only rule through bodies. That's why you find even the devil. How many of you have seen the devil in your house? How many of you have met the devil in your office? He cannot appear in your office. He only appears through a man. He only appears through a certain somebody. Because him as Satan, him as Lucifer, he cannot appear in your house. It is not allowed. He is a spirit. He cannot operate. That's why today if you ask the devil, he will tell you that I have not killed anyone. Because he uses people the same way God uses people. We need to pray so that the heavens may begin to influence the earth. We must pray so that God intervenes into our situation. If we don't pray, the heavens will not move in our situation. So the prayer of petition it's when we are crying for divine assistance and divine help. When we call unto God for the assistance that comes from above. When we call unto God so that God can come down and superimpose our situation and take over and change the way things are. Let me talk to you, my brother. When things are not okay in your marriage, it is not God's problem. When things are not okay in your house, it is not God's problem. When things are not okay in your nation, it is not God's problem. Problem. It is actually the problem of those who are on earth. But God has opened the door. We can call upon him in a time like that. We can call upon his name. He is able to come on our invitation. I am a Those who are in Africa, they understand. Uh, when you want to go to other nations, especially in Europe, 
you need an invitation for you to be given a visa. You need somebody who will invite you. They say, do you have an invitation? If you don't have an invitation but you have a desire, you will continue desiring until somebody invites you. It's still the same. Angels, they don't intervene in our situation until we invite them. Let me talk to somebody. God will not mess around with his name because of what is happening on earth. But if we call upon him, his name he comes down and changes the situation therefore you realize the need for us to pray the need for the church to pray the need for the body of christ to pray the crisis that we are going through as nations it cannot be solved by politicians it will take people that will begin to pray and to call upon the name of the lord and call upon the government of heaven to intervene in the in the affairs of humanity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's why you discover when you talk, when you read about the children of Israel, they were in slavery for more than 400 years, about 430 years. Hear what God says when he goes to Moses. He says, I have heard the call of the cry of my children, and I have come down to deliver them. Without a man who can cry unto the Lord, deliverance will not happen. Without somebody who can call unto God, without somebody who will wake up early in the morning and authorize God to deal with situations on the planet Earth, it will not happen. From today, I want you to understand how important your prayer is. I want you to understand when you are praying, you are not just releasing words into the atmosphere. I want you to understand that the angels of God are waiting for your instruction. They are waiting for your prayer. They are waiting for your authorization. Those who have worked for companies, that you have hired offices somewhere, that you have somebody somewhere, sometimes you need somebody to authorize for something to happen. You find people seated in the boardroom. They are waiting for somebody to authorize for them to do a big, big transaction. But without the authorization, they cannot do it. Let me tell you, heaven is waiting for your prayer. Don't blame somebody. Let me tell you, the angels are waiting for your prayer. Don't blame somebody. My God, God is calling us back to prayer today. Because the more we pray, the more heaven gets involved on earth. Can you imagine and when we call on God day and night, it means that the heaven will remain on earth. And then we begin to experience what is called heaven on earth. Because the armies of God will then make their dwellings amongst men. Because we are praying every day. But when the devil manages to silence prayer, he has closed heaven. Let me talk to somebody. A, a, a non-praying person has a closed heaven. As long as you don't pray, the portals of heaven are closed over your life. But when you begin to pray, your heaven is opened. You walk under open heaven. You live under open heaven. You do your business under open heaven. Because you have heaven backing. You have assistance from heaven. But when you don't pray, you are in trouble. And in these days we are living in, the devil has managed to convince the church that prayer is useless. But I'm here to correct that. You will operate at the level and standard and dimension of your prayer. You can never experience breakthroughs more than the way you are praying. The level of your prayer is the level of your life. If you are failing in prayer, you have failed already in your life. I want to say to somebody today, arise and begin to call on God. Let me talk to somebody. I want you to know that this is prayer is necessary. I'm going to give you these scriptures that show that God encourages us to pray. The first one is Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. He says, call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Let me tell you, God has great things. God has mighty things. God has things we don't know. But God is telling us, if we don't pray, he cannot do it. So he says, call unto me, I will answer. In other words, God is waiting for the call. 
heard people who say, Naswera Zwari Zendaka Mira Kutufone. I was waiting for your call. This is what God is saying every day. When he sees you in trouble on earth, God wants to intervene, but he cannot intervene un uninvited. He is waiting for the invitation, my God in heaven. God is waiting for the invitation. I've realized there are these guys. Let me just give this example. It's not a good example, though. I have seen these guys who do the tactic team in, re in wrestling. You know, uh, as long as the other guy is inside, you can tell as long as you're outside the ring. You can tell that these guys need, this guy needs help. But the rule of wrestling is that he needs to touch your hand. So we touch God's hand through prayer. When you realize that things are not well, when you realize that I'm being defeated, when you realize that the world is not moving, at my command. You don't have to die in the ring alone. There is an extended hand of God. All you need to do is to turn around. Let me tell you the rules of heaven are different from the rules of wrestling. Wrestling says you touch his hand, but heaven says you call. So the, the moment you say, in the name of Jesus, God comes down into your situation and begins to smash your enemy and begins to destroy that which was troubling you. I'm challenging the church of God today. It's a high time we begin to call. You don't have to shut up. You don't have to keep quiet. You don't have to close your mouth. It's a high time in our own homes. We begin to raise prayer. We begin to call Macho Kalaba. When we call, God comes into the ring. And God takes over the fight. And we go out and begin to watch. And we see how we gonna do it because the Bible says, Arise, O God, and let all my enemies be scattered. Oh God in the heavens, I want to talk to somebody today. You have to understand heaven is waiting for our call, heaven is waiting for our prayer. Heaven is waiting for you to pray. For too long you have been waiting on heaven. You have been waiting for on God. God has been waiting for you. Angels, they are waiting for you. The beasts of heaven are waiting for you. Let me talk to you. Not only that. Even the sun and the moon, they are waiting for your call. Even the stars, they are waiting for your voice. Even the wind is waiting for your voice. May you begin to print your voice in the realm of the spirit. Because in the realm of the spirit, they use voice prints. You need to print your voice. You need to announce your voice through prayer in the name of Jesus. Heaven is very ready. How ready are you to pray? Isaiah 65 verse 24. My God in heaven. Isaiah 65 verse 24. The Lord bless you. God says, it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. This is what God is saying. God is ready to answer your thought prayer. He is ready to answer prayer to an extent that even when you think it, he is answering. That's why the Bible says he is able to do above what we can think or imagine or pray about. Even when you are thinking, you are thinking to call. You are thinking about it. God says heaven is ready. Heaven is desperate for prayers. Heaven is desperate for people to pray. I want to talk to somebody tonight. It's a high time you must know that heaven is ready. Even a praying thought, even a prayer in mind they will answer even when you are speaking they will answer they are ready to come down to your situation they are ready to come in and fight for you they are ready to come in and bring down your enemies they are ready to come down and shame your enemies but they are waiting hallelujah we give god all the glory and the honor we want to thank god god heaven the system of god the system of heaven they are ready for us to pray what is actually not happening is that we are not praying. We are not supplying enough prayer in the heaven. That's why the Bible says pray without ceasing. Heaven needs supply of prayer, needs us to pray more. I want to challenge every child of God that is hearing me right now. I have come here to call for prayer. I have come here with a raw call and the raw call is for people to pray. 
Things are not okay in our lives, but we are just seated. Things are not okay in our families, but we don't talk about it. We just talk about it and we don't pray. It's high time we take our requests before God. It's high time we take our petitions before God and begin to petition heaven and begin to shake heaven with our prayers and begin to petition God and begin to tell God things have got to change. I, I just want to, to give you this one before I take you to, to the conclusion. This, this man challenges me. Set First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. Jabez, all of us, we know Jabez. And Jabez called on the name of, <clears throat> on the name of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou who just bless me indeed, and enlarge my court, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. God called upon the God of Israel. This man, this man challenges me, Jabez challenges me, and Jabez called on the God of Israel. His mother gave him a name, Jabez, which means pain, because she had uh, uh, given her, she, she had given birth in pain when she was giving birth to him. She had experienced pain, and then she gives this name and says, his name is Jabez. But when Jabez became of age, he realized that they, this, this is parental error. He realized that this is parental witchcraft. He realized that this is wrong. He realized that this thing can be corrected. The Bible says he went to God. He called unto God and said, God, change my story. He said unto God, bless me indeed. Change my situation. I'm here to say to somebody, as you are, you know there are some errors that have been made. There are some foundational errors that have been made in your family. There are some foundational errors that have been made generationally in your, in your family by parents, knowing or unknowing. I don't think Jabez's mother knew what she was doing. But her mistake does not change the consequences of what she has done. But when Jabez came to, to, to be of age, he said, I have to change this. And he realized that there's something called prayer. And he realized that prayer is a master key. And he realized that prayer can change things. And Jabez went before God. My Bible say, and the Lord granted him his request. I'm challenging somebody this morning. There are things that are not lining up in your life. There are things that are not going the right way. I want to tell you some of these are spiritual errors. Some of these things are parental errors. Some of the things are works of witchcraft. But you can go in prayer and go unto God because God is the master of everything. There is nothing that God cannot do. What God cannot do does not exist. What God cannot fix does not exist. I come before you today and say, don't just die like that. Don't die in poverty. Don't die under a curse. Don't die under other people's errors. Wake up and begin to correct them and say, I am not Jabez, but I am a blessed person. Stand up and begin to pray and say, God, enlarge my territory. Increase me, O oh God. Make me a great woman, O oh God. They there is a saying in our family that says, I cannot make it, but I refuse that error. There is something that says, poverty is my twin brother, but I want to break that thing. Begin to pray. If you just accept things to happen their own way, you will suffer on earth. One day you are supposed to put on the face of a lion and go into prayer and say, this must die. This must go. This evil must change. There is so much evil, especially in Africa, that must change. You are the, the, the change agent. You are the one who has got to change it through prayer. There is so much evil in your family that must be changed. You are the change agent. You must change it through prayer. If you can go into prayer and begin to call unto God and say, Lord, cause me not to cause pain. Cause me not to fail. Make me a great man. Make me 
mere billionaire. Refuse to die like your uncles. Refuse to be like people what they've called you. They've called you a failure. Now you have a reason to become a success. They've called you a nobody. Now you have a reason to become a somebody. But only prayer has got the power to remachine things and turn them into masterpiece. I'm here to say to somebody, don't put up with nonsense. This nonsense that you've gone through, it will take somebody who is not a salad Christian. This salad Christianity must, must, must go away from us. It will take some people who will be rioters, people who riot in prayer, people who take their Bible and go on top of the mountain and say, when I come back, I will be holding results of my prayer. This thing that, you know what, no one is married in our family. This thing that no one is going to make it is stopping by me and I'm burning it by the fire of the Holy Ghost. This nonsense must go. If you hear me, raise your hand and say, my father, my father, in the name of Jesus, I pray this morning, give me the garment of prayer. I have to correct the things in my life. I have to correct the things in my family. I have to correct the things in my nation. I cannot put up with this. My father, my father, Put the fire of prayer in my spirit. I need to fight this. I need to pray. I'm ready for prayer. My loins are ready. My knees are ready. My mind is ready. I'm changing the situation. From today, I'm no longer a chappers. I am a blessed man. I am, my territory is enlarged. No evil upon my life. I will not be grieved. You need to be serious when it comes to praying. Prayer is a serious thing. I just want to leave you with this this morning as we are about to close. Because prayer is very, a very serious thing. It means we are supposed to take it seriously. So point number one, you must make sure, I told you last week that you need to keep a prayer journal. When you go for prayer of petition, it's now a serious thing. Don't just waffle. You need to record your prayer. So point number one, you divide your journal into four columns. The first column is the debt. You say debt and prayer request. You can use the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. First, it says, And Hannah was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept. You are supposed to record when you prayed. Record the debt. Say it. Write it down. On this day, on this date, you record. It was on this day. And then you record your request. What were you praying for? Hannah didn't just pray and say, Lord, put things okay in my life. Oh, God, fix my life. That's not a prayer. When you pray the prayer of petition, you must, you must be very clear, mention what you want, and define it. What is it that you want? Don't just go before God and say, make everything okay. What do you mean? You go before God and you are praying. What is your request? If your request is a male child, Hannah was clear, give me a male child. So that's your request, give me a male child. You understand? Then you go now uh, where you write details. On the details, you now summarize. Like I said, be specific, give your details. You may include even a vow there in your prayers, like Hannah. Hannah vowed and said, if you will give me, verse, verse 11, if you hear verse 11, and she vowed a vow and said, O oh Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look unto the affliction of thine headmen, and remember me and not forget thine headmen, but will give unto thine headmen a male child, a male child, then I will give him unto you. Now, it's a vow. And the rest of his life, and, and no rest that shall come upon his head. So, 
she is making a vow before God. Let me tell you, she had not yet children, but she's saying, God, if you give me this one, a son, I'll give him back to you. So be, you now go there and be specific. What do you want? When you pray, I have, I have known a lot of people, they just waffle. They just waffle. Prayers of part petition they don't need waffling they need details you are supposed to be specific what do you want hallelujah don't just say to god give me man what do you want what is it that you want be so you put details there hallelujah if if then if then you put vows you are supposed to understand that a vow is a very powerful prayer according to ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 5 but I want you to go to number three. Number three, you now detail. You now detail the answer. You now detail the answer. You have sit the dead, what you want, the details of what you want. You now then say details of the answer. You give the details of the answer. My God, verse 20. Verse 20 there. He says, wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked him from the Lord. So you give the details of the answer, my God. The date of the pregnancy. You must understand this. The date of the pregnancy is different from the date of delivery. So you are supposed to be sure that you understand that at this stage it's pregnancy. At this stage is now delivery. So it is important for someone to understand that most things in life they go through incubation. Hallelujah. They, so you have prayed and you have believed God. And you are pregnant in your spirit. You are pregnant of this. You are pregnant of this. You are carrying this thing. So you should always go into your journal and say, This is Samuel. Because I got him from the Lord, my God in heaven. You, 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 you are giving details of your answer. Samuel has not arrived. He's still in the pregnant state. This is a very delicate and a very dangerous state. A lot of people, they miscarry their miracles. They miscarry because they don't have a detailed life. You should always visit your miracle every day. Visit my katayama, your pregnancy every day. And begin to say, this is Samuel. I got him from the Lord. Yes, he has not manifested to the world. He has not manifested to other people. But in my spirit, he has manifested. So you give your miracle a name. You give your breakthrough a name. And you detail it in your channel. That's why I said last time, a person without a channel, he is not praying, he is playing. When you are serious about your prayer, you have a prayer channel where you detail the debt you prayed. My God, you put down the details of uh, specifications of what you are praying for. And you also record the miracle. My God, my Andakaya, you record the miracle from inception, from the moment you conceive, my God. The Bible say about Hannah that from the moment... Uh, El <laughs> When, the, when, when Eli decreed, the Bible said he had first changed it, my God. She had already, the conception had started in her mind. Let me tell you, when you are serious about what you are praying for, you begin to imagine it in your mind. You begin to conceive and to receive it by faith. You begin to know Samuel is here. Even your talk is different. Even what you eat is different. You see, a pregnant woman does not eat what others eat. A pregnant woman eat strange things let me talk to somebody when you know you're waiting for a miracle you begin to eat strange things like revelation you eat you you begin to eat worship you begin to eat praise you begin to eat joy because you are pregnant of what you are praying for oh god in heaven my god Mandokoya Maya Kaya Telende Mahasia Kata. I pray today. Your miracle will not die in conception. Your miracle will not be aborted. I pray today you will not miscarry your miracle. What you prayed for is coming to pass in 2021. People who don't have prayer journals, they don't even know what they prayed for in the beginning of the year. They don't even know what they prayed for. If I ask you, what did you pray for in March? 
and you cannot tell me what you're praying for. You are not praying, you're waffling. And in this kingdom, prayer is a serious principle. We can't waffle during prayer. We are supposed to be serious. It's warfare. Prayer is a matter of death and life. Therefore, you must have details of what you are praying about. Say that you will not miss your miracle. A lot of people, they prayed about a lot of things and they can't even remember. They don't even know whether it's Samuel or Samson. What they are praying for, you are supposed to be serious. You are supposed to know that this one is Samuel. I, I, I ask to him of the Lord. When you see your miracle at work, you know that promotion does not come from the east or the west. You say, this one is Samuel. I asked him of the Lord. You are praying for that house. You will not be you will not be puffed up that, oh, my house is special. People cannot have a cell group in my house because, you know, they will they'll spoil my carpet. Hey, my sister, is that not Samuel? If that is Samuel, I asked of him from the Lord. The last column you put the date of full manifestation. <laughs> when you bring him to the temple to a lie, and you say, I was the woman, I am a who prayed that day. I am Andoko, who you spoke to that day, and you said, Hey, you are drunk. And I told you that I wasn't drunk. I was pouring out my life in prayer. You need to record the date of the date on which the manifestation manifested. And you go to Eli and say, I am the woman who was praying for that miracle. I am the person who was praying. My God, in the name of Jesus Christ, for that manifestation. I pray today. I sent a red in the realm of the spirit. There is a rumbling for prayer. There are hannas that are rising up and say, I'm fed up of being barren. I'm fed up of being called names. I'm fed up of being ridiculed, but I am arising right now, and I'll begin to fix this thing. I'll begin to fix this error. I'll begin to fix this because I was not created to be ridiculed. I was not created to be mocked. From this day, people will stop asking you, where is your God? Arise and begin to pray, and you will have a testimony that you cannot hide under the table. Samuel. The good Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, I decree and I declare. Amen.